Well, I just got pulled over. I'm in crossing through Texas and I just got pulled over by the nicest cop I've ever met in my life. Nicer than even officers Spinks and Rocha. Technically, they didn't pull me over, they were called, but anyways, I just wanted to make this, uh, well, it's fresh on my mind. It's like three in the morning and I'm exhausted. I'm headed to Okeechobee to go hang out with Blaney Boo for a little while. And um, I got pulled over and I'm not gonna give this young man's name. <clears throat> I'm not gonna show his picture or anything. Um, I do understand some of my libertarian type friends have an argument against that, but all I can say is, you know, tough shit. This is, <laughs> this is me and I'm going to make my videos and live my life the way I want to live them. <clears throat> he said I was swerving and I, I guess I was, I don't know. I wasn't speeding. I was intentionally uh, going about five miles under because basically I get better gas mileage and that's the only reason. Anyway, I was a little irritated that he pulled me over. Um, to me, that's perfectly logical. Uh, not doing anything wrong outside of, I guess, swerving. Anyway, we I was kind of a dick to him and he took it real well, but I couldn't help but notice he was very young and he was very polite. <clears throat> and it was like I was talking to Parker, my own son. And uh, he ran my license and gave it all back and everything was fine and he said you, you know you're free to go um if you want or something and we just wound up talking and then the the, the barrier was let down and he invited me to talk to him because i was and i was asking him a few questions just you know how's the weather type questions and he invited me to talk to him in his car because we were on the side of the highway and i said sure and so once I established that I was free to go and everything's fine, I was just curious. I wanted to talk to the young man. And I'm doing this for two reasons. <clears throat> One, his body cam was going, and we talked for about 15, 20 minutes, you know, after the stop was, you know, over with. And uh, just in case his bosses ever see his body cam or check his footage or whatever, I just wanted to let him know. Um, Mr. Sheriff, uh, you've got a good deputy. You've got a nice young man. And uh, I hope, you know, whatever we talked about it on his body cam, you know, I hope that doesn't get him in trouble because I don't think he deserves it. Um, and the second reason is pe most people know my stance on cops being a libertarian. I don't quite take the stance that I used to. I'm not quite, I'm older. <clears throat> and I've realized that we're not gonna change the system overnight. Um, I've, been, I've been on record for years saying this. I want to promote if we have to have cops. Um, I want to promote peace officers. I understand there's dickheads out there. I was kind of a dick to him at first, but he's he toughened up. He stood his ground. He was very polite, though, and I don't want to give him that, but I want to encourage these young police officers out there, even old ones that have gotten hard, to remember your humanity. So anyway, we wound up talking. He'd been in the Marines, and I was just curious as to how someone so nice wound up on the police department or the sheriff's office, and I asked him if he'd ever heard of uh, Major General Smedley Butler. And he goes, well, of course. And I uh, said, so, well, you know, he wrote a book called War is a Racket. And we got talking about what's going on at the border. <clears throat> and I just told him, it's a complete setup. I'd steer clear of it. You know, we're in the, going into World War Three and Civil War 2.0. And Anyway, we wound up talking and I was, I just, I was so curious because like I said, it was like I was talking to Parker. He's just young. He's a young man, but he was clean cut, um, very, very professional. And I said, you didn't, were your parents divorced? He goes, no. 
I said, well, they good, okay, good deal. You know, they've obviously raised a, a nice young man. And I, I just couldn't help myself. I said, do you remember watching uh, a, an old video came out years and years ago where that this 14 year old boy is sitting in his dad's truck and his mom's hassling and stepdaddy, step daddy's hassling to get him out of the car. He goes, yeah, that sounds familiar. He wound up pulling it up. <laughs> he goes, oh shit, yeah. Man, I saw that a long time ago, which was just so funny to me. I mean, yeah, it was a long time ago, it was just 10 years, but I'm 46. From his perspective, he's a year younger than Parker. For him, that was damn near half his lifetime ago. But uh, he said, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and watch this. I, I, I definitely remember watching this. And he, he said, it's not every day you meet your heroes. And I was like, what? That, that caught me off guard. Like, I, I, I didn't, I have to admit that caught me off guard. Anyway, we wound up visiting for just a little bit longer and I encouraged him to not let this world um, lose his humanity. Because I said, you know, obviously there's plenty of dickheads out there and some people actually do deserve to get fucking handcuffed. I get it. He goes, well, Mr. Leverett or Caleb, uh, I, I, you know, you, yeah, you were kind of a dick, but I, you were far from the worst dick I've ever had to deal with. <laughs> but it was neat to see the dynamic change from, you know, not enemies, but, you know, a civilian and the officer of the law to, you know, we're just shaking each other. He even said, well, he's, after he told me I was free to go, he said, this is kind of awkward for me. I have to admit you're, you know, old enough to be my father. And, Anyway, we, we kept, we just visited a little bit and we we're talking about, uh, he brought up, he knew about the Major General uh, Smedley Butler and how the, the famous Christmas day where they basically, you know, just got tired of fighting each other and like played soccer or whatever, you know, they just visited for a little bit. I said, well, yeah, you know, when it comes down to it, we're all just human beings. Those young men, they didn't want to be out there be, just being cannon fodder. Like I said, War is a Racket is a book by Gen, uh, Major General Smedley Butler. And I haven't read the full thing, but I know the basic gist of it. You know, it's fuel, the wars are fueled by both, you know, I mean, the bankers are fueling uh, both sides of the war, funding them. They always keep us pitted against each other. And the only way I can see any way out of this is to a focus on yourself and make yourself a better human being and if there's any kind of bridge that we can gap and just talk to each other like human beings that's the only way i see uh, us surviving this so anyway i didn't mean to make this a clickbait video there's nothing dramatic uh, it was just a it was a nice conversation to have with a young man and it was neat to watch the dynamic again from civilian to officer of the law that wall come down and like i said i went he invited me in this car and i just went and sat in his sat in his uh, passenger seat it was neat to watch that that wall come down and to uh, you know shake his hand and you know just talk to him human being to human being and uh, anyway so again uh, Mr. Sheriff, uh, whoever hit this young man's boss is, if you watch your footage or see this, I just, I really genuinely hope that you, uh, this young man doesn't get in trouble for, you know, talking to an old rabble rouser like me. Um, in my opinion, since we have to have, America says we have to have, thinks we have to have this uh, thing called the police force, I'd rather have um, peace officers and I've, I've been on record for years for saying that I'd much rather have peace officers than uh, you know asshole dickhead cops and I told him that and he 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 gets it he goes he he's seen the videos he know he knew he knew that there's plenty of video but it, and and to his credit there are plenty of people out there again like I've said absolutely deserve to get fucking cuffed and they need it because they're a menace to society so anyways i hope everyone's doing well i'm again i'm headed to okeechobee i'm gonna go hang out with blaney boo for a while 
Um, I've been going through some some more personal growth myself. I can't get into it. It's personal, but um, you know, all's well. I'm, or, you know, obviously things could be better. I'm still dealing with what I've dealt with since I got divorced and trying to make myself a better person if I can. Um, I took off from the gym for uh, a couple months and I've finally got back into it. I've, I've still got some my muscle structure, but I've put on, a, I've put on a few pounds. So I'm looking forward to going working out with Blaine. I'm gonna stay steady to it. Still sober as a, what is it? Sober as a nun, sober as a preacher. Actually, I really am sober, not fake sober. I'm loving my sobriety, three and a half years. I don't even keep track of the months anymore. Yeah, I did for the first couple of years, like two years and three months and seven days, but now it just kind of all runs together. Looking forward to getting back into the gym. I encourage you, if you've got a problem with any kind of substance, alcohol or whatever, that is not going to fix your problems. Focus on yourself. Try to see yourself objectively how others see you and fix what's wrong with you. You can't fix other people, so don't even try. Women can't fix men in a relationship. Men can't fix women in a relationship. Nobody can fix someone else. They can guide, people can guide you. I mean, that's why some people watch me. They can guide you. I can tell you from my experience, the, the fucking bottle is the road to nowhere. But focus on yourself. Again, obviously this world is falling apart. I mean, just look around. It's, it's going to hell in a handbasket. You can't fix it. Only thing you can do is fix yourself. So I encourage you, if you're struggling with divorce or anything of that nature, or shitty job or a combination of all of it, that bottle ain't gonna fix anything. Sober up, get your spiritual life right, get your physical body right, get your mind right. Look at your own life and your own decisions with an objective eye and Find out where you've screwed up because all of us have screwed up. <laughs> I have definitely screwed up. I've made horrible decisions in the past and uh, I'm trying to remedy that. I'm just going to stick with the gym. Um, watching the, the, uh, the crypto market and the real estate market and the stock market and I'm studying how all that works. And um, anyways... I guess I'm done for now. Y'all take care. And oh yeah, I'd like to point uh, one more thing. A mentor of mine named Ben Vonderheide reached out to me. And if you'll notice, there's a bunch of videos that have nothing to do with me and my struggles with my kids that are being put up. Uh, he's busy. He's gonna. He's got enough content for I don't know a couple months. He's gonna be releasing just about every single day. So no, my channel hasn't been hijacked. Uh, I'm honored to have a mentor of mine. I used to watch his old videos when I was in the depths of family court hell. And I was so inspired because he started record docu recording and documenting his struggles with the family court like a decade before I did. And so to be able to, to be working with him is, a, is a truly an honor for me. So. Anyway, take care, consider not hitting your cheerings and get your asses sober, get to the gym, lift heavy weights, stay off the fucking alcohol, drink water, lots of protein, lift heavy weights every single day and read books, educate yourself. Because I have learned this in my 46 and a half years on this earth. The stronger you are and the more knowledgeable you, knowledgeable you are, the harder you harder you are harder it is for other people to fuck with you y'all take care